Well, it was fun while it lasted. The Chicago Bulls season officially comes now to an end after a loss to the Miami Heat in the second playing game for the second year in a row. The Chicago Bulls just didn't have the edge in this game, and the Miami Heat came out there, executed, outplayed, and outcoached the Chicago Bulls. We're going to talk about it all and more. Have some fun right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bull Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it, man. Um, yeah, that's a wrap on the Chicago Bulls season, man. The Chicago Bulls season officially comes to an end after a playoff play in victory against the Atlanta Hawks. The Chicago Bulls just do not have enough in the tank to even come close to beating the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat basically led this game throughout most of this game. I think the Bulls had a brief lead in there when it was like 10 to 11 at one point in time. But, you know, other than that, the Miami Heat completely and utterly dominated this game with effort. The Bulls only held a lead in this game for two minutes and 49 seconds. And it just, it is what it is. The Bulls had the biggest lead they had in the game was fit five. Uh, the Miami Heat had a, a lead of 29 at one point in this game. And, you know, the Bulls just, they didn't execute well enough. They could not shoot the ball to save their lives. 38% shooting uh, from the field tonight. Much better shooting in the second half than in the first, right? But, you know, when you shoot that bad in the first half, which the Bulls shot the ball 27% from the field in the first half of that game, you come back out in the second half, you do shoot it 40, uh, 47% from the field and 42% from three-point range in the second half to the Bulls shoot. Those are all respectable numbers, but, you know, it just wasn't enough. Now, I mean, when you get off to slow starts, and that's been – one of the things and storylines of the Bulls season entirely is the slow starts, the not being able to hold on to leads, even though that didn't play a part in this game. And the Bulls lost the lost this game the way that they lost many games this season. Um, you know, stagnant offense, not able to make the right defensive plays, um, and not able to adjust. The Miami Heat adjusted a lot in this game. And even though the Bulls got the lead down in the second half to, to single digits at one point in time, the Miami Heat immediately came battling back in this last game of the season. DeMar DeRozan scores 22 points, going 8 of 16 from the floor, uh, four assists, three rebounds, one steal, one block, only one turnover from DeMar in that time as well. Then you have our second leading scorer, which is Nikola Vucevic with 16 points. He goes 7 to 16 from the field, 14 rebounds, five assists, two steals, one block uh, from him. Kobe White, 13 points, our third leading scorer, 5 of 16. Much better second half from Kobe, but not really great there definitely not to up to the level of his first playing game uh well first playing game of this offseason uh Javante Green with 17 minutes off the bench 12 points in that time but then other than that again Alice Crusoe six uh Torrey Craig six uh Dalen Terry 13 points no uh I'm sorry 13 minutes no points scored uh Javon Carter with four minutes he actually was plus seven in those four minutes this time so shout out to Javon Carter uh two minutes and Andre Drummond, I'm sorry, two points, and Andre Drummond also with two points, four rebounds in this game, only eight minutes played. So, you know, take that for what you will. Uh, the And, you know, this was a fitting into the Bulls season. Uh, and the reason why I say that is the Bulls tend to raise expectations only to completely pull the floor out from underneath us. That has happened so many times this season. How many times have we gotten close to 500 and then that's been pulled away from us? This was very much like that as well. Every time, you know, the Bulls, we get our uh, we get excited about this Bulls team, uh, things go the way that they go, and that's just what it comes down to, man. That's it. That's a wrap. It's deja vu for the second year in a row. The Miami Heat going to go ahead and send the Bulls home. And, uh, yeah, that's just what it is, brother. I don't, I don't know what else to give you on that one. Um, it's, it's, it's been a season, man. This has been a season of frustration for Bulls fans. It's been a season of revelation for Bulls fans. Um, but the, you know, the people that you look at to have the most revelation in this, um, just didn't have it. So, uh, uh we, we got to see what the uh, front office takes and how they look at this, um, and what they want to do to kind of improve this team. So. <sighs> It is what it is, man, and it ain't what it ain't. Like, to, it's, it's, this is just, like I said, a perfect loss to bring together the Bulls season. Um, Billy Donovan out coach, 
Kobe White cold shooting from the field. Uh, you know, these are all the bad things that have happened in this game. DeMar DeRozan, our only offense for large portions of this game. Uh, Nikola Vucevic, I can't even give Vuce much uh, slack for his defense today. He was actually giving some effort defensively for, for most of this game, uh, but couldn't get, couldn't, nobody could shoot the ball. We couldn't make enough threes, right? Terrible shoot, uh, three point shooting night. So it's just, it, the, the, again, I know I said it earlier in the, at the start of the stream. I'm going to say it again. The Chicago Bulls season ends the way that most of it ended for the Bulls, right? With disappointment. And, uh, you know, this needs to be uh, why the front office really needs to look at this uh, team and this roster and the construction. We know they're not changing coaching, right? So that's an unfortunate thing because you're not going to look to change that. So the only thing that you can look to change is the roster, right? If you want something different. And, you know, I guess you can bet on continuity yet again, which you've had players like Io, you have players like Kobe uh, who've really stepped up for the Bulls. And maybe you look at it and hope that uh, through another offseason of continuity, you're going to get something for Patrick, Julian. Dalen, but uh, ultimately, I, I do hope that this front office takes a good, hard look at this team. We'll probably be getting the season-ending pressers uh, from the Chicago Bulls probably sometime by the middle of the week. I'm, I would be guessing that we're going to get that. No inside knowledge on that. Just kind of how these things go uh, when it comes down to, to the season ended. And, um, you know, the front office really has to ask themselves, what do they truly want to build, right? No more of the buzzwords, no more of the sell trying to sell us on competitiveness or sell us on you, you're, we're going to be more active or we're going to be surprised by what you do. No more of that. Just go out there and get something done to improve this basketball team. And most Bulls fans will be happy with that, right, is, is making some improvements because this team, as much as this season has sucked, right, as much as we had some really bad losses, this team isn't like at the point where – they're years off from being able to be better. They just need better, um, better overall flow. They need better flow. They need some uh, better construction. We need some shooting. We need some. Uh, we need a lot, right? But it's bits and pieces of that. And so, you know, hopefully they uh, they look at that and they really try to bring that to this team in a meaningful way. Um, but yeah, uh, it sucks, man. It just sucks that this is the season uh, that we've had. And it comes down to an end like this that you all can expect. We got Bobby in the building. What's going on, Bobby? What up, Brody? <laughs> we just finished turning up on the Chicago Bulls. Now it's time to turn up on the ass right here again. Because they hey, man. I mean, listen, I, I, I wish I could say that I was surprised by that. See, Dub come up smoking. Uh, I wish I could say I was surprised by, by this. But... Uh, you know, and somebody in the comment section today, my daily episode was like, hey, this is a time where we need to be positive. I'm like, it's not positive or negative. I'm just being real. I know what this team is, right? I'm not surprised by them disappointing us. It's how, how the Bulls do us every single time. What up, Dub? What up, big dog? Hey, look, man. That Miami Heat was devoid of two starters. You had no mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler. You had a partridge and a pear tree on the Miami Heat. And you come out and put that <laughs> performance on the court. It's only one word to describe you guys. Soft. S-O-F-K with a K. Soft. <laughs> you motherfuckers is soft. Blow it up. I don't care. You ain't no way you should, should come out and come and perform like that with the talent Miami got on. The, I know they got an excellent coach over there. I know. And I know I'm being an old. I am a. I'm one of the biggest Chicago Bulls fans, and I know I'm overdoing it right now, but I don't give a damn. You guys are bogus for putting that performance out there on national TV. It's embarrassing. Soft. Soft is it. K. everybody, everybody, including Billy, including the assistant, assistant coaches, including the dudes that serve the, 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 the Gatorade bottles. Soft. <laughs> <laughs> and don't try to uh blame it on jerry reinsdorf he don't care this he's a businessman i hate when pe it's such a lazy thing when that's what to go to I, jerry I just man. literally said that's how we don't blame jerry because the last two seasons ak told us he has the green light i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear i don't want to hear shit about jerry ak said we have the green light to go over the luxury tax to put together a contending team. You see my little bro cook uh, was just drinking. He don't do that. I'm about to look. Hey, drip. You got to let Steve-O cook right now. 
I, I can tell Steve was gonna go into one of his one of one of his his tirades is about to be epic. So before Steve O goes, before Steve O goes, right? Because once Steve O gets started, can you gotta let him cook? You can't. It's like a freight train. You can't get in the way of it. You gotta let him cook. Um, but here's the thing that I want to say with this is that we saw once again why roster construction is and culture is important. The Miami yeah. Heat didn't just beat us just by the nature of being this super better team than the Chicago Bulls, right? Yep. But they have a culture, they have coaching, and they have a system that they buy into. And you know what what that means? We saw we saw it here with Chicago. How many times did we were we still top three in the league in records when Derrick Rose was out? He was our engine, right? But the yep. team had a culture. The team had a system. The yep. team had an expectation. We have no expectations as a team right now. We have no expectations of a franchise. There's nobody that's holding everybody accountable to a certain level of play. There was a quote during this game that the announcers on ESPN said, and by God, watching national media, nationally televised games make me miss fucking Stacey and Adam so much. These motherfuckers were terrible. But outside of that, they said that Nikola Jovic said that I had to learn to be a Miami Heat player before learning how to be an NBA player. Wow. That's culture. That, wow. That's powerful. Bro, nobody is coming in here saying I had to learn how to be a Chicago Bull before I had to learn how to be an NBA player. Nobody's going to say that. You just fucked me up, Drip. That, hey, oh, that, was such, that was such a powerful quote. They said that five minutes into the first quarter, and it stuck with me the whole entire game. That just made me We mad. don't you know have why? a culture drip. Zero. Yes, we do. Yes, what we is do. It? What is a losing it? culture. It's called the culture of bitch. Because that's what we are. That's how we act. Talk to him, Steve. Come you on. got a bitch as you got a bitch as a GM. You got a bitch as a, a fucking president, Michael Reinsdorf. You got a bitch as you got all these bitch ass players. All the it, it's a team full of bitches. So the culture is bitch. That's what happens when you bring this bitch ass shit to this city. And we keep doing it because we got a bitch ass goddamn GM that's humble. I want continuity. We are gonna make it work. Three years later, we still in this bitch ass situation. <laughs> hey, bro, don't don't, like, don't let Billy Donovan off the hook, bro. Oh, I no. think this is fire, bro. <laughs> How your team ain't ready to play, bro? Win or go they, home, chips in the middle of the fucking table. How they ain't ready to play? Because Eric he wasn't ready to coach. Because Eric Spoelstra is a top. Five coach in NBA history, oh, almost. That shit, that shit oh, is some. I, oh, that's some nasty shit. Almost. When Top you look at the in, rosters, in, in days, we early, have early, better early, yeah. players, player for player. We have the best roster between the two teams. But when no I know when, when I logged in, organization. When I logged in, the conversation was about being the culture, and Billy Donovan is a part of bull culture. And guess what? That coach is getting us results like this. The reason why Miami won tonight is not because they had the better players. You're right, Dub. They don't have the better players. They didn't have the better roster tonight, but they had the better team because of the culture. This this Bulls team did exactly what they've done all season long, bro. Like, they did. They This is the same Bulls team we've been watching all no. season. Fact. One night, one way. The next night, another way. And tonight, because the defense was ratcheted up, because, look, Atlanta doesn't play defense, Dub. Atlanta does not play defense. The Bulls ran into a buzzsaw and did not perform. Kobe did not perform. Io did not perform when that defense stepped up. And it all started with the culture of that team. Regardless of who's on the floor, they had a next man up mentality, which is why that young man was able to say, I had to learn how to become a Heat player before I became an NBA player. Yeah. Okay. You ain't got okay. I... to you ain't gotta learn how to become a bitch if you already won. Oh shit! Hey, um, I, I I'm not disagreeing with you, and I've never been superstitious in my life, so I don't believe in metaphoric. Uh, it's it's the culture that win, even though it might have been. They, I be stepping on cracks all fucking day. I don't care. You got the best His culture and roster. superstition are different though, bro. Uh, like you're talking yeah. superstition. You just killed me. You just killed Those are different my things. Joke. You did. <laughs> I ain't bad, gonna lie. That's, that's, that's the thing. Like when you. They constantly can bring it. See, that's the difference. Why I kind of went on y'all about we. Tr they can bring motherfuckers from the G League and develop them. We can't do that. 
Every time we try to do that, we don't, for one, we don't even play their ass. That's for one. And then for two, they learn on their own if they do develop. So let's so say, like, that's let, my let's say the Bulls, right, if they decide to actually fire Billy Donovan this season, what coach? Not happening. So I'm, it's an if. That's, it's a big if. But what coach could come in and change the Bulls' coach? See, that's the thing. That's the thing. I hate that question. And, here's, and I get why you asked that, but here's why I should say that. Nobody knew who the fuck Eric Spoelstra was. Nobody yeah. knew who Eric Spoelstra was. Nobody video. knew who Mike Dangalt was. Nobody heard that name other than in those franchises. So the question I get, a lot of people ask, us, well, who are we going to bring in? If you do your due diligence, you go find. that. If you truly want to build, how many? There's very few coaches that you can hire that have been in jobs before that bring this ultimate great, great culture. There are some that can help. Uh, or help reaffirm what you already have, but to establish it, you have to find a ne the next great head coach. Most coaches that truly have culture and have a standard, they 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 came up and they had to establish their name with those teams. So it's not about going out. None of us should know the name of the next coach that should that should be able to come in here and establish a culture. We're not talking about just taking this and all of a sudden turning this the same roster into a winning franchise. I'm saying that you have to first. Get somebody who's going to hold everybody to a standard and what Billy Donovan does not do. He has some positives as a coach. He has a lot of negatives as a coach. But nobody, you can tell when when he, he'll he say this, the right shit in press conferences, but you can tell he's not saying that shit in, in, in practices. You can walk into any middle school gym right now and they move without the ball more than the Chicago Bulls move without the ball. Just depressing. Oh, my God. Yes. Watch, oh, it, watch, it, it, watch it, Jaime have hot that. cares cut to the basket on numerous occasions tonight. Was just like, oh my god, I would oh, love rookie. to see the Bulls do that. He got destroyed by Jacob the fucking pirate. Jacob, no, this no, motherfucker no, don't, he don't even he don't <laughs> even got damn work. He, he don't just even work on his game. You, you absolutely. Captain Morgan is it, bro. That's it. Yeah. I just got Go ahead, ask Bobby. a question on how many times the Miami Heat wanted to allow the Chicago Bulls to be back they in this game. Plenty in the second, then the, at the end of the first, and at the yeah. entire second quarter, they wanted it was to there. let the Bulls back in this game. Mm -hmm. Jovich was jacking them. Jaime was jacking them. A, Tyler Hero. A Hero was jacking them in that at one point. They wanted to let these guys back in the game, but as it always comes down to, you are a reflection of your coach. Look at in one year, one season. Look at the drastic change from the Houston Rockets. Last year, they immature. They not ready. That's a good they point. play too much. They got players that don't take things serious. Yeah, they got a few players in Shangoon and Jalen Green and these players who, who could potentially rise to the occasion. This season, we're like, damn. They these guys matured in a, in a major yeah. way. That's These coaching. guys put themselves in a position to fight for a playoff spot and show toughness. These guys beat some major teams and went on a nice run towards the down stretch at the end of the season. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bobby, look at the, the Oklahoma Bulls, City Thunder. We call least this team bipolar. That's just what it is. Just look at the play-in tournament. <laughs> they bipolar as hell. Who look at them. Kobe the White. Story of the team. What the? Kobe, what? Are you kidding me, Kobe? And, and, and that's one thing that Kobe said is Kobe came into the season at the, before the season started. I, one thing I want to work on is my my inconsistency. And don't get me wrong. He was way more consistent at this point than what he had been in any other point in his career. So he did work on it. But you still got a lot of work to do, my brother. He's you still, still got a lot, got of, work a lot of work to do. Bro. Still got a lot of work to do. So I'm going I'm to talk about right. this comment because uh, because I, I know a lot of people are going to say this. And this is DJ Lovelace, a.k.a. the villain, because his picture is definitely a villain photo. That's my that's my dude. <laughs> though. Uh, when he says, Bulls fans should have stopped showing up to games since they went 2-31 and 31 from 3 in that one game this season. Here's what I'm going to say. We got to stop telling Bulls fans that it's not on Bulls fans to make the front office do a goddamn thing. Nobody, when you when you go, you're going to enjoy. It's something you are patronizing, but you it should not be on the fans to say, let's boycott this team to make them give a damn. If it gets to that point, it's too far gone. The fans should not have to sit there and boycott a goddamn thing to make your front office care about putting out a winning fucking franchise. If you got to do that, it's never going to be sustainable. Never going to be sustained. We got to stop that. Looking at this, CF Football Candy and the other people that say, well, if we just stop going to games, that's going to make – keep in mind, we the, the Bulls dropped out of the top ten in, in attendance one time. 
One time. And yeah, change came after that. But you know what took it to do that? John Paxton had to go to the, the ownership and say, I don't know how to do this anymore. And then on top of that, even with dropping out the top 10 in, uh, in attendance, they looked at AK and said, hey, you should keep on Jim Boylan as the head coach. And AK had to say, are you fucking tripping? <laughs> you fucking smoking? So... <laughs> I feel you. I'm glad he said that. I, I, I feel you, Hayes. I'm going to say this. Up. I'm not saying don't go to games because I'm one of those people that feel like the Bulls fans should do something. I'm just saying when you at the game, get some fire Jerry or sell the team chance. That's, I can get with something. that. I can get with that. Yeah. That's all I'm I want to hear from Steve. Go, Steve. You want them to not go. I don't, I don't want them to go because what's the point of being there? They've shown you ain't no point of them being. They're not going to try. So don't fucking go. When people, when teams, when teams are ass and they don't improve in any sport, niggas don't show up. That's just what it is. You say we gotta be. It's too far gone, nigga. We off the cliff. We been off the cliff. We done. We off. It's gone. We we been gone. 25 they, years. I don't know what else that like maybe if, like at seven this point years at this it, point but... we just it's gonna be the same thing for infinity until this motherfucker sell it or whatever he does. Because if we're gonna sit there and not do nothing, he's just gonna be like we're gonna do continuity for the next three years. And we're gonna be saying, okay, we're gonna be here for it. No, don't be there for it. All right, Steve. You know what that, that boys logo means when people look at that boys logo all I don't over give the a fuck world. What it means. People I mean, want to go to the United Center. They want to see that Michael Jordan it, statue. Can we keep it a bang? Right. You got to also keep in mind, you say people are not going to – it's not even you're, – you're not affecting Jerry Ryan's or pockets for real. Those people in the United Center, when they got to fire them and cut back their jobs, yeah. that's you affecting those people. The people who are selling tickets to the Chicago Bulls, you're affecting those people. So I get it, and I understand what you're saying, Steve-O, but like I said, it, you can never make – and on top of that, people are also going because they want to see the other players. They want to yeah. support people that they've seen – play for their entire like you cannot make a franchise care if they if it's not already in the I have the saying about mental health and everything you can't put in in anybody what's not already in them when people try to blame somebody else oh you you made me do no motherfucker it was already in your dumb ass to do that shit I may have stirred you but it was already in you if you don't do the things internally first it don't matter what happens externally go ahead Bobby I was just gonna say I'm thinking that looking at everything for what it is and when you think about the whole situation for what it is, it's just bad, bro. And honestly, I lost my train of thought. So <laughs> <laughs> you've been drinking a little bit. Hey, <laughs> but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like when you think about all the 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 shit that has transpired within this season, yeah, you looking at it for what it is, and like, bro, how can you acknowledge it? You know what I'm saying? And say that this is what it is. Because if you look at a lot of the things that go on in the Chicago Bulls arena, you look at multiple organizations bringing and having company parties for no reason. Mm -hmm. That's going to that's gonna bring in that additional revenue. Like, literally, it's fans down here. Everybody know I live in South Carolina. It's fans down here. They not even Bulls fans. But they say, I like red. So they wear the red shit. So, and these guys have set up the marketing so well, it's like you can't lose. If your favorite color red, you're going to get you a red and black Bulls hat with a red it's and black up. Bulls hey, Steve -O, jacket. If you wear Jordans it's any place in, in the United States, any place in the world, you want to come to the United States one day in your life. It was literally no, people. people I, 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 no, 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 no. Let me no, say they this, want, man. They just want some new Jordans. That's Listen, what they want. <laughs> Bull, Bull, the Bulls are still a beloved team based yes. on that Jordan stuff, but my dude, it's been 25 years plus, almost 30 years. If you start adding up the right way, if you round it's up been a little that long, bit. been that long, though. Niggas, 1998. Yes. yes. For a championship. Yes, the but glory it, days was no, not too long ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. you right, nephew. Here's, you here's, right, nephew. Here's the right. thing: like we, I, the glory. we cannot consider the 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 Derrick Rose and Luol Deng and Joe Kim Noah team. I want no damn glory. glory That's exciting. Days. 
Why not? Why not? Why not? Here's here's what I'm gonna say, Kev, and I, I I'm gonna let you finish. But mm -hmm. uh, damn, I just did the Kanye on you. I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish, but but you, I think you you for you us yes, but you gotta realize people Bobby's age and younger. That is their glory day. I know, so and it's day. unfortunate. Man, my fucking it's glory. terrible. That's my glory, my glory got I'm cut sorry. to shit. Bro, no, like, no. Look, no. all of us are Bears fans, bro. And ain't none of us going to be like, man, that, that Earl Acker team, then was the glory days. No, we want to see a Super Bowl. No, I we do say that they're so, like, I'm, 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 I'm a big fan. But they are big not Cam. the glory you days. You wasn't bro. late in 06? You, no, my dude. That was you wasn't fantastic. lit in 2018? I was lit all the way up until we didn't win the Super that Bowl. Shit. And then I Let's wasn't lit honest. no more. Let's be honest. Let's be I honest. was lit all the way up until uh, Double Doink. Uh, and look, then look. I wasn't lit no more because we the didn't win the Super Bowl, bro. <laughs> let, let's, be fucking, let's, be, let's be fucking for real because I'm the youngest motherfucker here. That yes, wasn't no are. fucking glory. Right. That was a that was a glimpse of happiness. That's right. what the yes. and they got yes. cut, and they cut that shit down. Wait, wait. You are a basketball savant. For the normal people, that was their glory days. No, for the that's people, fine. Who, that's the, the normal ass glory. People. Listen, there I was mean, a listen. Point, there was a point. In there's, time there, there's, there's a dude married to an ugly ass woman for 25 years right yeah. now, and that's his glory. Listen, bro. <laughs> there, was a point time, there was a point in time when <laughs> Tina Turner yeah, looked up in her relationship with Ike and said, "This is glorious." But that didn't mean that it was. Uh, that don't mean that's the drill. Hey, it's real. Hey, it's real. It's real. <laughs> you mean that somebody proposed with Devin Huss to run that touchdown back? Absolutely. <laughs> you can't tell me from the early 05 on. To a few years, you wasn't excited to watch the Bears. Yes, that was one of your excitement, excitement and, and glory is different. I don't want to hear it and say they didn't win a championship, nigga. You was cheering every time Devin has to coat the ball until he wasn't. Hold on, real quick, real quick, exactly. real quick. Your, your glory glory day. Was in Atlanta. Glory until days in Atlanta. don't necessarily have to mean a championship. Let's, you yes, was, in my in, in my you world, it right do. That's a good point. That's Listen, a good in my point. in my world, it do. Real quick, Steve. So you championship a dynasty? No, listen, listen. That's not listen. I never seen one. Oh, let Kev cook. Let Kev cook. Let Kev cook. A, so, like, just take the Cubs for example. That though, that Kerry Wood striking out twenty something plus people that was glorious. Mark Pryor, Dusty Baker, all of those guys coming within a, a Steve Bartman interference play that was glorious. However, however, when they finally broke that curse and won that championship, nothing compares to it. Nothing. Of so, oh, the listen, White Sox. so, so White all, Sox. I'm, all I'm saying is. You can have moments. You can have great players, and that's what bothers me about the Bears the most is that they've had so much generational talent come through these doors and they've only been able to get one true Super Bowl championships aside from the early years of the NFL. However, if the Bears had six Super Bowls, just like the Bulls got six championships, we wouldn't be saying anything about those are the glory years when, when Peanut Tillman them almost won. Like, no, My you want to see wins. You was old enough. And at a moment in time to where it was Erlacher, Lance Briggs, and a bunch of those other guys Be with honest. Devin Hester Great right time. there, no matter who the quarterback was, you cheered for consecutive years and hope that the Bears will win a championship. I want you to be honest. It was the same thing. So not, for you not. and Steve, -O, I don't want to hear win. it. Between the, the time that Derrick Rose was a rookie – to the time that he was traded, those were some glory days. Glory days doesn't necessarily have to mean it's a championship. Do we want that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you, the team gave you belief yes. well enough to where you believed in that this team could have a chance to be in that championship series or game. That's what I mean. Steve-O? That ain't no fucking glory. <laughs> See what I'm saying? When you all said it, there's a couple comments I want to get into. Uh, this first one says, Yeah, right. Fireguard packs done it before. Fireguard packs, well, that's the point I made. Fireguard packs didn't do shit because they looked at your Fireguard pack sign and they said, Yeah, we, we're keeping them. It took for, for John Paxson to go and say, Hey, 
I'm dumb. I need to leave out of here for then the ownership to say, all right, man, we go ahead and let matter of fact, can you stay on as an he's still on the fucking payroll? He's still on, payroll. He's still on the fucking payroll. And Garpax, Garpax better than AK. I'm gonna tell you that much. And, and, and guess, they and guess we'll still I guess we'll still the same be the time from that time. And then this now. one says, guys, there's a little report from that. First of all, it's not a little report confirming, it's speculative about a mystery exec. And if you don't think Darnell Mayberry be capping. Go back and read the history of his articles. I love Darnell Mayberry, Mayberry, but that motherfucker be capping. He he'll he'll say, "Hey, I think I think this should happen." Guess what? A, a mystery exec. All of us. Every time he tweets something, a month later, a mystery exec says the same shit. Come on, you just got hey, to do a little research. We on that do shit. know how Reinsdorf operates, though. We yeah. do know. Well, listen, that he, we that do he's know. On he, the sit, saying, he sits. He sits home, and but but, but but how we also know how he operates. He doesn't. The only mandate Jerry Ryan. I, I hate that people act like they heard what Jerry said. They act like Jerry's like, oh, you can't, you can't pay this player that much money because th that's not never what Jerry's mandate is. It's don't go over the luxury tax. If AK wanted to pay eighty million dollars for three prostitutes and Zach Levine, if it stayed under the luxury tax, he'd say, cool, bet it's all good. So it's on the front office to take care of their job. That's it. That's why I said if you <laughs> go back, if you go back, if you go back to that whole thing, there's still a consistency there. Michael fucking wild. How many hookers? <laughs> True. <laughs> what I'm saying is that if you bring in a a, a, a different owner that is just as hands off as Michael Ryan's, uh, Michael and Jerry Ryan's of, and He's just says, "Hey, not owner. The luxury tax, it's not going to change anything." No, as I long as you have the same I, people, I'm, I'm not hey, talking hey, about that. I ain't talking about that, contract, Michael. Bro. Hey, no, I ain't the strip of the max contract. I ain't giving the strip of the max contract. Hey, but Richard but Gere even, did. I'm, Richard Gere gave a prostitute a max contract. A million, bro. That was a super max back then. You, <laughs> everybody nah, loved it, bro. <laughs> pretty now woman. Every time gave, I watch Pretty Woman, I'm like, contract. man, this is cat. Now he mad. Hey, bro. I'm hey, hey, hey I won't lie to you, though. Pretty Woman's a good ass movie, bro. It is. Like, it's crazy how good of a movie that is. It's a class. Go ahead, Steve. Good movie. All I'm saying is trying to get a new fucking president. I'm done. I can agree with yeah. you on that. No, I can right, fucking rise door if I ain't doing shit. The, here, here, the thing that I look at it with this, as far as AK, to me, AK gets a chance to really try to work himself out of what he what he built here that fell apart because of injuries and whatever else. But I'm not giving you another. Like I know he's gonna be here another decade. There's it's just is what it is. We we my son's gonna take over this Michael, show before uh, he's gonna go right. Mm -hmm. But you, 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 what you built here was working briefly. And I understand wanting to hold on to that glimpse because we were number one team in the East. But at some point, once, once Lonzo's contract is off the books, AK, you on the fucking clock and you don't get very much longer to show you what you got to me. I ain't giving the most fucking time. The, the, the clock know. over with. Summertime is here, motherfucker. The, the, the bell is wrong. A lot, a lot of more time, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I'm not giving him no more time. Like He has time because he's a, a executive for the Chicago Bulls, but as far mm -hmm. as my patience is concerned, oh, that's over with. That ship is sailed. When, when I see you holding on to the ghost of Lonzo Ball for whatever reason. <laughs> right, bro. Stop it. Melvin in the building says, uh, us Bulls fans, hey, Acme, we need some shooting. Acme, I'll give you old-ass Goran Dragic, Torrey Craig, and Javon Carter. Oh, my God. Great. I great mean, that time, is exactly man. what happened. Now, granted, Torrey Craig was playing a lot better before his injury. He never quite got back to that before his injury. Bruh. But Yo, they're going to have to get, send everybody a president a, a present in Chicago for Javon Carter. <laughs> we got all got to get something because that this ain't Bulls what we This Bulls game made me for. want to snort coke. Now. That's crazy. Damn, that's crazy. I'm gonna say this for I'm, I'm gonna say, say this. I ain't never wanted to snort you coke that, ever. You already had interest in snorting right. coke, my boy. Don't be trying to blame. Don't be trying to blame the bulls on you wanting to dabble oh, in a little right, cocaine bro. there, you my boy. Man, man, what you want, you. bro? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never you said that. You want some sugar? Right, bro. <laughs> ain't nothing ever made me want to do cocaine, bro. That's what I'm like. saying. That's what I'm saying. Hey, hey, the bull's stressed out. I want to try some dick. What? Hey, <laughs> not one. No the dick. The fuck? I, I get a call, and then I come back. What the fuck? That's what, what I'm trying to figure out. Hey, oh, bro. Drip gives me the context. No, I ain't no dick. Oh, come back. <laughs> it tried. <it. laughs> Say no, Diddy. <laughs> oh, Lord. Next comment. Okay. 
Hell no, that was an excellent comparison. <laughs> it was. Excellent. It was, bro. This is so high, bro. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you fuck Steve up. Look at Steve. <laughs> Bobby. I'm with you. I'm like, hold on, what? You oh the man, youngest <laughs> up, man. niggas be blaming the wrong things for what they really want to do. <laughs> oh lord, Melvin, what you want, gang? Look what you did, bro. <sighs> oh, oh man, okay. Glad All right, my bad, y'all. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> hey, big fan from Florida. Who you guys think is the go? MJ, you asking a panel full of Bulls fans this? No, 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 no. Shut your ass up, nephew. I swear to God. Stop. Hey, don't start that. Let's not do this, though. Don't. Next, next comment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man. That's LeBron. crazy. Next comment. Boy, if you don't shut up, nephew. <laughs> oh, man. That is wild. Um. I don't even know what to, what to be said anymore, man. I have no idea. Hey, that's hey, crazy. If we if we gotta pull up off the if track, we did, whenever we did, we gotta. I'm why knock it. That was Melvin that knocked us off the track. I was just that was Melvin, bro. That, that was, was Melvin. all Melvin, bro. That, that was, was all Melvin, yeah. bro. That we were being Melvin. very tame up in here. <laughs> I do that, man. Go ahead, Bobby. Go ahead, the NBA snitch. Because I was gonna say, why y'all think Kobe better than LeBron? He's not. Yeah, he tried to start nephew on some bullshit. Though. He See, he pouring up right after you say that. <laughs> he know exactly what he means. He's not. He, he trying to start shit. Know. Ignore my nephew, Joe. He tried to Why start Why y'all think Kobe's exactly better than LeBron? Because he had a different mindset. Kudos yes. to him. Shout out to all y'all boys forever getting us through the Bulls and Bears seasons. It's cold in these Chicago streets. See Red Bear down. Appreciate you on that one. Appreciate you. Oh, I, really I can't know. even say it. I, I can't believe I got myself through it. <laughs> this has been a season, man. This it is has. this has definitely hey, been a season. We saying all this, but watching these White Sox games that they got shut out again today, bro. Like I'm why like, why you gotta man. keep bringing them bring niggas up? Because no, I'm, no, I'm already, no, we already in no, the Listen, we got all of us over here. Y'all don't be coming to the White Sox game. Oh, right? okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you do post game shows over there consistently? I do as as much as I can with my work schedule. You know, how you got to tell me when the next one. I'll pull up. It got to be in the evening though. But that's that's the thing. It'd be the timing. It's, um, just, it's they lose. I watch the White Sox game. So uh, like most of the most of the people on this panel, well, the panel knows, but most of the fans here don't know because I don't host Chicago White Sox Central. I'm a huge White Sox fan, and, and so I was watching the White Sox game the other day, and literally by the I think I think it was the the bottom of the six. I literally was looking at it. I was just like, you know what? And I broke a keyboard. Y'all can figure out what happened after that. So <laughs> did you break the keyboard drill? <laughs> it's mer- it's terrible, That's bro. It's mer- it's terrible, bro. Yeah, mer- what's, mer- the mer- mer- what's the record? What's the record, bro? The White Two Sox got 14. three. Yeah, no, they three. They because they won their when third the game. They win. They- they won the other day by accident. The second game by of a doubleheader. By accident is crazy. The second game of a doubleheader. That's the only reason they won. Bro, the White Sox, been, they've been shut out more than any team in history to start the season. And they, they got shut out again tonight, bro. It's terrible, bro. Damn. We got bro, our the White Sox are not off the trash, bro. I thought I thought starting Chicago Bears Central was gonna make my beard turn gray. I think I think Kev every day that he came and said he wanted to do the baseball channel because if I tried, they're three and sixteen right now, mm-hmm. bro. There's no way, man. There's That's no bad. way, bro. And I get so far because it's not like don't get me wrong. They don't have the most talent, right? But they got talented players on this team. And every time that something happens, you know what? Let me stop. I'll come on White Sox Central. I'll air my grievances because I'm about to oh, go God. through a whole nother no, time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got I I got When I was out there, guess what I I've never, I've I never seen our top fucking players get hurt in from the first running. Week. In the first week, bro. From oh, running. In the first week. Drip. They're like, not I, even trying to go. I'm ready to start comparing. Comparing what? What? What you say? I got one conclusion. This nigga Kev is dying his beard. That's all I got to say. Oh, he definitely. <laughs> he's definitely <laughs> he got to. He's definitely. No, <laughs> listen. <laughs> I started losing my hair at 19, 20 years old. So God bless me with other things. Like I can see very far. I, and if close. beard's a blessing, your life. Said, is I shit. can see. <laughs> 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 I can read the bad beard, bro. No, no, no. 
I'm talking about no grays in it. I got like one or two grays. That motherfucker dying in his beard. That patchy ass nut hair, bro. I don't know. You may want to <laughs> die at you may want to no. die, die gray. Yes, no. man. You may want to try that. Try flip, switch it up a little bit, bro. No, I don't want to have uh, this nut nigga hair. That's not weird. 50. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I want. Did you just let that nigga did, did you just let Esau let, say you got nut hair? You to die nut in gray. I can't accept that as, as the fate of my beard. My beard is solid. <laughs> Zach proven correct about Billy <laughs> and the team. The I got to disagree with that. I got to disagree. You can't say that Zach's proven right about Billy and the team when the team had an above 500 record without Zach Levine this year. I mean, That's yeah. facts. Period. Fact. Zach That's Levine fact. has had a negative point differential every year of his career. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Zach Levine don't get to look at nobody and say, oh, y'all the problem. No, nigga, you also a part of the problem. And that's yeah. not to say the roster ain't a problem, mm -hmm. but you were part of the problem. When you have a 54 win percentage without your max level player, that's not proven right about the team. That brings mad questions to you, my guy. Mad he questions. Say they was the problem. He ain't say he they was the problem. He said he don't like the fucking coach. Oh like yeah, I mean, but no, yeah. he said he said he said correct about Billy and the team. But the team likes oh, Billy. Yeah. Right. So, but the Billy, yeah. I, nobody, nobody, nobody's gonna give, gonna stand here and defend. And, right and that's the problem. I don't give a fuck if you like him. He suck. He's not a good coach. He, he's not good. He yeah. okay. And that's what Zach been saying. So he's to me, okay Zach coach. was right. With you on that. He's in the he's okay. okay. He's an he's okay not, coach. He's not bad. He's not bad. He's an okay, he's okay. coach. Brothers, come over to the... We have a Cubs channel. It's Chicago Cubs and White Sox. I'm not... I'm not Never I'm from the same channel. I really do think they'd be doing better if they were separate, but that's Kev. He's hosting them all from one channel. Do you honestly think I want to be a fan of some fucking toddler bears? They better than the White Sox. <laughs> they ain't, I don't give a fuck. They still ain't shit. Hey, Wrigleyville lit, though. I ain't gonna lie. Wrigleyville lit. Again. Wrigleyville Wrigleyville lit. lit. I'm not White Sox. I don't give a, I don't give a damn. He ain't, just, been a leg, he ain't been to Wrigleyville. And Steve I don't plan on going. You've never been to Wrigley, Steve-O? Why the fuck would I go there for? Oh, my God. Hell, watch when they play hey. the Sox. You've never been to Wrigley? Hey. No. We got it. Don't worry about it, Drew. We got him. I don't want to hear that crazy. He's going to kidnap this nigga, Joe. He's going to love him some Cubs. Hey, I, I, I won't even hey, lie to you, bro. Hey, Wrigley's a nice stadium, you. bro. I ain't going to yeah. lie to you. Uber is there to Wrigley. Yeah, I'm a you, you think you go y'all go sit down and y'all ain't gonna see me for the rest of the fucking game. You can't, I'm gonna be gone. Yeah, will catch your ass at, at the, the house. <laughs> at the house, I'm gonna Uber out that bitch. When he see and the Wrigley bathrooms, he Uber definitely Uber gonna tweak out. You think I'm gonna wait? You think I'm gonna wait a half an hour to piss? No, so you gonna Uber no, that? No, no, no. Like you, you really no, gotta no, see no, the Wrigley bad. Hey, Drip, no, he like, said he said he gonna y'all gonna kidnap. The only way y'all going to Wrigley, I ain't driving now. You going to Wrigleyville for sure? Yeah. That's what's happening. You know, Kevin drive the motherfucker drive home. Hey, bro, I ain't talking about the Cubs. I'm talking about Wrigleyville. Talking about I don't Wrigleyville. want to be around them. Hey, we in that bitch, big Kev. Let me know. Guys. Anyway, let's oh, get back bro. on this bulls thing. When y'all, when y'all look, when y'all look at this season, what, what word, phrase, whatever are you using to describe this season for the squad? Hell, question. Great question. In, Hell, in consistency. Inconsistent. Bipolar. Fraudulent. Hoes. Upsetting. But there are some positives. Soft. 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 Upsetting. But there are some positives. I got two positives. That Torture mean the world is a great to me. one. <laughs> I got two positives that mean the world to me. Kobe White. Yes. I was one of those guys that said, I'm sick and tired of Kobe White. Get the fuck rid of him. Let him go. Let him do whatever. Wow. <laughs> Kobe White came in. He showed why he should remain a Chicago Bull. Last season, which is number two, Ayo Dosumu. Yes. I was so sick of Ayo Dosumu last season. I know that it what the numbers still look the same, but for me personally, the impact wasn't the same. Mm. Mm -hmm. This season, Ayo Dosumu is at the top of the list of the most consistent bulls of the season. He yes, has to be. Absolutely. In some at ways, he's more consistent. more consistent than Kobe. I would agree with that. I ain't mad at that. I would agree with that. He didn't look and, at that. Except tonight. <laughs> except tonight. Both of their ass yeah, was, we, was trash. We're we going we gonna to scratch tonight. So I would say out of all the turmoil, you still got some young pieces you can build around. Um, I know that some people wanted to fully blow this entire thing up, 
and I'm okay with what the results is right now. I'm a little ticked off. I give you that, but at the end of the day, you got Kobe White, Ayodo Sumu. I believe Daylon Terry is coming around. Coming around. I believe yeah. Julian Phillips is something that you can work oh. with, and I believe in Orlop Batim is something that you that uh, you could build with. That's five players that you can count on and see if you can start to add on some more younger players or some additional veteran players to see if you can start turning this thing around. So despite all the bullshit, because I'm ticked off that we lost this game and put up this embarrassing effort, but if you think about everything in this totality, I'm happy that at least two of our young guys step forward and play consistent throughout the season. Oh, that's good. And, and, and I was with you all the way till you got on to on rap bit team because I think he still needs some G League to me. I, I don't think he ready. He, he had a good first couple games shooting, and then he's not been good at all for the rest of the season. But I want to give some props to DeMar DeRozan for the final uh, couple months of the season and for this game, to be uh, to be honest. He was pretty good this game, but you couldn't see it from all the bullshit that was blocking our, our uh, eyeballs. I don't know if I like him on this team next year. I don't know if the Bulls are going to sign him for an extension, but I'm going to give him a props for what he did for the final part, for the final half of the season. And this last play-in game, if I'm going to give any props, I'm going to give it to DeMar DeRozan. I'm right so. there with both of you gentlemen um, as we close out the season. And for real, we got to take – one last shot before we get up out of here. But um, I do feel as though um, I agree with you, Bobby, and what you had to say about the young fellas and Kobe and Ayo, especially Ayo. Um, to see Ayo step forward in the way that he did uh, after last season where his confidence was shot when they brought in Gordon Dragic and expected him to kind of play behind him. He, re re he rebounded from that sophomore slump, and I give him credit for it. Kobe as well, although he just had really just like a six-week stretch where he was hot and then he kind of fell off from there, which is up and down for the rest of the season. But I do give Kobe credit for taking a step forward. I will say this, though. I agree with you too, C-Dub, about DeRozan uh, to finish the season based on how he started the season. He started the season kind of selfishly, in my opinion. I but agree. Nikola Vucevic, Nikola Vucevic, you bogus, bro. Yes. Go, oh, finish it you off, Kev. It. Come on, come on, Kev. Give me more. Nikola Vucevic is dead wrong for the season that he gave the Bulls. Am I still yes. here? Did yes. I leave? Okay. I just do not like the, the effort that he had. I don't like the fact that he settled so much. I don't like the fact that he didn't, when he had post-up situations, he didn't demand the ball, but he talked about all those things. You got your contract extension, Vucevic, and you – did not deliver this season. So if, I, if I'm if i going to give my most disappointing, besides Billy Donovan, because he, he's just too inconsistent as a coach for me, Vooch, you bogus, bro. You bogus. You get, bogus you get a still. Most disappointing down for your season, is, is Nick Vooch, you saying, Kev? Yeah, for oh, me. Yeah. This I season, agree. Yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%
Another thing he did this season that he didn't do last season, he was missing bunnies again. Missing yes. shots, missing oh, right around bro. the basket. Like, dude, that's a layup. You seven all feet. All What's wrong talking. with you, bro? All that lip. So, yeah, all that lip. up do and it. down season, exactly kind of where we thought it was going to be uh, as far as Steve and myself with the Bulls record. And as much as I wanted to see them make the postseason, I'm hoping they take whatever draft fortune that they get now and start mm-hmm. to rebuild properly. Uh, for this team because I'm tired of seeing mediocrity. I'm right there with Steve-O. There's no you. way that I can rock with this squad the way that they, they're currently constructed. And it's time for AK and them to step up, for real. The way that I describe this season is uh, uh, it's like dating a chick that's ugly and with a bad attitude and a fat ass. You in it for one thing. There was two things in this season that were good. Kobe and Io. Everything yeah. else was in the goddamn toilet. You can't be ugly and have a bad attitude. Oh, That's bro. what this team was right now. That's and you got to get your shit together, bro. Like, you you got to get it together. And am I expecting you to correct it to a point to where we're all of a sudden looking at this team like an Eastern Conference? No. Can we get to being competent first, right? You saw what we just played. You saw what we just played. We just played the, the Miami Heat. They got culture. We got to start establishing that. You just had a player say, I had to learn to be a Miami Heat player first and an NBA player second because that's how important their culture is to there. Ain't nobody looking at this shit. Oh, I got to I had to become a Chicago Bull. Nigga, these motherfuckers don't even stay in the city. Other than Iowa, they don't even stay in the city in the summer. Bro, come on now. Talk to him, Drip. Talk to him. What we doing, bro? Like I and, and watching that Joe Kim Noah today on the OG podcast, it just reminded me of truly the the mindset it takes to win basketball, and we don't have it. I, Kobe stepped up as a leader. I love to see him being vocal. I love all those yes. things. But Joe Kim Noah, he just said it's been ten years, and he said it still haunts them that he wasn't able to get over the Miami Heat. This team just lost to the Heat today. You think it's gonna haunt him? They're gonna go. Demar is gonna go cuddle up with his with his fifth side chicken, make another side, baby. Motherfucking Zach Levine's already probably in fucking California. It don't even matter. Patrick Williams gonna go motherfucking till some goddamn flowers somewhere like a motherfucker. Ain't don't nobody care about losing. We on this panel are more upset about the way the Chicago Bulls season went than they did. That's a fucking problem, bro. That's facts. That is absolute facts. Hey, hey, you know what the thing is? It is so much work to do in this offseason. Oh man, yeah, you got wow. Lonzo coming. You got you got to deal with Zach Levine. Are you gonna uh extend Demar Derozan or Patrick oh, Williams? Too? You got the draft coming up, Patrick Williams. Catfish, you gotta find some way to get rid of cat with catfish. Nobody's taking him, bro. Nobody's Nobody. taking him. Cut his ass. I don't give you can't <laughs> cut his ass, bro. They no gave way. this man. Uh, they gave this man a three year contract with two of the years being guaranteed and the third year being partially guaranteed. We stuck here. It's smelling like fish in this bitch, bro. For a while, <laughs> unfortunately, bro. He Woo! can't play professional <laughs> basketball, oh, drip. And the crazy thing he is, like, the reason we uh, call him. Just look at it. That was wrong. The third year is a fucking player. What did Javon Carter do to earn a player? option he got a player option no fucking way he shot 40 why, why are y'all so shocked i keep trying to tell y'all this shit start from, from up top i'm not i don't want to no believe this shit it's start up top even when we had joaquin noah why did we not win because the fucking front office didn't finish the fucking job and no, complete no, that. that. I got to disagree with that. That's because they're broke. No, 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 no. You couldn't get better than Keith Bogus. You couldn't get better than fucking Keith Bogus. I'm not trying they to get better. They did get better than Keith Bogus. They got Marco Bellinelli, and then he never got to play with Derrick Rose. They also had, um, what's his they name? They was going against LeBron, LeBron James. James. They also had Hamilton, who didn't do nothing either. Well, LeBron James, the no, only- Rip Hamilton was cool that first a year and a half, and then it's like Rip walk w- woke up one se- one year and was like, "Damn, I'm 34. Yeah, Shit, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finished. I'm okay. finished. Yeah, and but Keith Bogans was that? it, bro. That was it. And, 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 I'm, I keep it y'all, y'all, you saying that, but what do you do after Mark Bellinelli? What do you? But do that's the that? thing, though. At that point, they they realized that Derrick Rose. If Derrick Rose would have stayed Derrick Rose while you had the ascension of Jimmy Butler, I, I they would have paid the luxury tax. Oh, yeah. I, I get but all that, that but point, once so. you realize that wasn't the way you go, then you go to the next thing. You focus on Jimmy. You didn't do that. They did focus on Jimmy, and then they they no, conti- they, they, they proceeded to the so They didn't fit them at all. They said we can't figure out how to fucking build a team around him. So well, that was that. after Jimmy left. That was three years after they traded Jimmy. So so therefore they didn't do it. No, they, they didn't, didn't do it. They, they just did it wrong. 
They well, did it no, wrong. The one year they did it right, Ray John Rondo got hurt, and that killed it right there. But even though, I, and I get it, yes, they, they were on pace to beat uh, Boston. That, it was Boston, right, in that, in yeah, that playoff Boston. series? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let's not act like that se That season was a fucking struggle. They just That's happened to pull that shit together. By the I was so mad at D-Wade, bro. bro like, yeah. You had you know a chance to come here in your prime. Don't sign people, from Chicago, people from Chicago. Bro, you can draft them. The ones that we draft do good. We signed fucking Jabari Parker. Right. Trash. We right. signed Derek, I mean, uh, uh, De uh, Dwayne Wade. Fucking trash. We signed Javon Carter. God awful trash. Stop oh. signing these motherfuckers. If you're not drafting them, stop signing these motherfuckers, bro. Real talk. I agree. Simple as that. Because all the best we best we got was Derek Gaia. But they gave D Wade fifty that. That's mil. They gave him 50 for mil to play mil one win. season, and then they bought him out and gave him a, gave him what? It was thirty million dollar buyout. The wall pissed me off. I'm gonna punch a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was so, Wait, hold on, it hold was on. annoying. Ain't no bro. way he had a fifty million dollar. Yeah, they gave him twenty five yes, million a year, bro, for two years. It was oh. terrible, bro. And I'm like, dude, you had a chance to come to the Bulls in your prime, in your prime, and you dude, was like, wait, nah. yeah, wait, he wasn't did. in his prime. He wasn't in his prime. Oh, you had he had a chance and he didn't do it. Okay. Yes, my fault, my fault. He yeah, could have yeah, convinced right. him and LeBron could have literally said, hey. He could have said, LeBron, you played oh, for yeah. your home team or your hometown team already. Come play with me in Chicago with D Rose, bro. We can go win some championships and make the Bulls the 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 true third greatest franchise in NBA history. And they decided to go kicking in Miami because of taxes, bro. That's really what it was. I honestly believe that they didn't want to pay them taxes. It was like we could make more money playing in Miami. Let's go. It's crazy. Who blame them? I don't even blame them. But I, I blame them, man. Come we to the paid, we, hold on. we paid uh uh Dwayne Wade. Fifty million dollars to eventually recruit him to the Miami Heat. Because if it wasn't for that relationship he had with Dwayne Wade, he would have never signed with the Heat. Yeah. Crazy, uh, Jeff. Yeah, it happened two years happened. later, but still, like, yeah, bro. And, and you know what that was? What I always call that Dwayne Wade when he come to Chicago, he felt bad for going to the Miami Heat instead of Chicago. So no, he, he felt bad good. about not staying with the Miami Heat. That's why his ass got back there as soon as he possibly could. <laughs> the Miami. I thought he went to Cleveland right he after did, that. He did, but remember, and then he asked them to let him out his deal so he can go sign with the Miami Heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah, Bulls were, yeah. The, the Bulls tried to move up to get D-Wade out of Marquette, if I'm not mistaken. They were looking at him. Uh, they, they ended up getting Kirk Heinrich that year, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm good with Kirk. Fuck. Dude. Oh yeah, Captain Kirk. For real. <laughs> I'm good with Kirk. All right, we we taking the, uh, is Steve O coming back so we can take a shot before we get I up out of here. Steve must be punching the shit out that wall. I think he. I think he was just <laughs> that wall didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Steve O a big man, Joe. He fucking that wall up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a big boy. Um, we taking shots. Yeah, for the season. Man. I ain't got no cups, so we still we can taking straight out straight to the head. Oh, bro. Salute, man. I appreciate you, brothers. You already know I love y'all with all my heart, man. Thanks for getting through this season with us, man. We're going to keep achieving more things next season. There goes Steve-O. All right, y'all. Yes, sir, Ski. Yeah, Steve-O. Yeah. Damn, you hit that like a pro, Steve-O. You be flexing, bro. Stop be lying to us, gang. Steve-O be trying to act like he don't be. Uh, no, yeah, no, nah, don't be trying to nah, face don't now. Don't play with us, Joe. Don't even play with us. You knock that man. down, bro. You knock that down, bro. That don't mean like it was good. Look at this guy. You knock that shit down quick, though. Mm-hmm. So the, it can get the fuck over with. That's how I drink. I don't drink for taste. If I'm going to get drunk, let's get drunk. Let's get the fuck let over me find with. out it's a mini bar to the left. The left of you or the right of you? It's a mini bar or something. Is it? <laughs> My man, Steve. <laughs> well, um, off season plans. I want to. Uh, it's funny that the guys are here. So I know that we usually don't have a lot of live streams during the off season. And while I stay daily during the off season, you're still going to get daily content. We're going to go live when news breaks and shit. But, um, I, I, I want to get all these guys together at least once a month over here so we can talk some shit with the Bulls as things go on over the offseason. So, don't man, man. Yeah. my bro. What you talking about once? You can have it, have, you know what I'm saying? Once? Come on, man. Hey, everybody got their Bobby's moving this, man, this summer, bro. Look, you just, we already oh, yeah, know, bitch. Yeah, but come on so, now, once. But we're not that busy. More, more man, than once. Nigga, once I'm busy. <laughs> hey, that's nephew ass. <laughs> 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 
Shit being real. I just gave your ass the care treatment. Look, <laughs> I'm the one who already busy. I'm happy to be here tonight. What is he talking about? Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I'm still so happy hey, to be here. You need us. I'm, I'm going to do business. Slad. Slad. Ain't no other game. We slad, gang. Yes, sir. Thanks That's for a great it. season, gang. Much love, y'all. Y'all know what we do, man. Like, Come on, now. We come. It's been a great season uh, for, for the content here and to interact with you guys. The yeah. bowl season's been – it's been rough, but, you Ooh. know, I mean – that's what we're here for. We we yeah. here to kind of be the the well to be the voice of the fans and to give a platform and uh for us to have a place to escape this nonsense because we all know this front office don't give a shit about us. So we that's gotta nice. give a shit about us, man. That's facts. So. Man, Steve O, man. I gotta give you props, bro. You was right, bro. I was on your ass last game, gang. But hey, I, hey, I, I, I ain't hey, say nothing this game. game. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna say no, nothing this game. No, no, it's not even on game. no cocky shit. It's not even on no cocky shit, but when I, I tell keep... y'all something, nine times out of ten, I be right. Hell seven. No. Like we seven, was right six. last game. Like 4.5. <laughs> like 4.5. <laughs> I say, we not Nick, not I giving you no I've above. Never said, nine I've times never out of ten said, is a lot, bro. 90%. I've never, though, never, I've never said we was going to lose last game. I said I wanted no, us to lose. I'm just letting you know, last game, we was late. We good. We were late. <laughs> and that made y'all that's why we crashing and burning like a Hell motherfucker yeah. that <laughs> mother I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've been in the store from the school of bobby even kill baby i ain't oh, over i've been trying to be no kid. nigga you just be tired don't be tired like, <laughs> i don't trust this team Kev I wake the, up tired, bro. Kev I, wake up and be sleepy as hell, bro. I do. Be working I, be hard, man. I, have, I have to sit on the side of the bed and think about if I'm going to call up or not almost every day. <laughs> 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 Don't, fuck Don't you call off, nigga. That motherfucker <laughs> hey, uh, be Bobby. coming up with new ways, bro. <laughs> Don't you call off, gang. <laughs> oh man, that's funny, man. Oh but all right, God. man, let's get up out of here, man. We appreciate you guys so much, man, for all the support throughout the season. Like I said, this is not goodbye. I'm not going away. The content stays daily during the off season. We don't stop goodbye. because of it. Um, and uh, yeah, man, y'all make sure y'all gonna support Big Kev. I'm sorry, uh, uh, C Dub and Bobby over at the Shy Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys. Y'all can support Big Kev over at Shy. Uh, Chicago White Sox and Cubs Central. You can support uh, Steve-O. He's basically the star of Chicago Sky Central, even though, you know, I'm technically the host there, but Steve-O's the, the star of that one. Oh, no, we coming. We coming. Here. We want some, some of this Sky Juice. These guys no, are man, be No, y'all, y'all wasn't with us shooting in the gym. <laughs> no, yes, y'all we wasn't was. with us shooting in the gym. I be in the comment section the whole y'all, time. Y'all wasn't with us <laughs> shooting in the gym. Okay, you <laughs> outside of the gym. <laughs> Hey, come on now. Hey, they definitely was on the last been in these WNBA trenches for a right. year, bro. All right. Hey, 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 y'all ain't have to y'all ain't have to do y'all ain't have to do deal with Courtney Williams and uh, Maria Maria maybe because we was watching the game because of y'all. What you talking oh, about? Oh, bro. <laughs> we they had to cutting deal us with all out, that. y'all. They cutting us out. Because <laughs> no, no, that is nigga see them for the be last call to the game. Talk about some Angela Reese. Angela Reese. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <laughs> hey, real talk. You're you're fine to do like you will. Like, see, that wants to do live calls over there. That's all fine. But but dub, you be killing NBA players' names. You better start doing some fucking research now, bro. Hey, no, nah, hey, yeah, hey, don't bro. hey, real talk. Ain't you dub had a great year calling people's names. Oh, so, real talk. yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, see, dub's the one. Him. See, dub's one of the best live callers in the business, bro. Oh. Bears, Bulls. He's trying to come over to the sky now. I, I throw, I throw my guy some jokes, man. But no, uh, see, dub. I remember when see, dub first started uh, doing live calls. He was good then, but he's, he's, he's so much better he's now. Like you gotta get until, him, until he gotta say, until he gotta say, Olenek. <laughs> Olenek. <Olenowick. laughs> A Lenawick. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga had a W into this nigga. Who the hell <laughs> ancestors named they fucking people a Lenawick? What the fuck? <laughs> Blame Canada, that's man. not their fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, me, but, uh, that's not the name. Y'all that gotta excuse crazy. us. We crazy. We the yeah, best. But uh <laughs> yeah, so for those that are asking, the sky coverage will be the same that we do here. We go live after the game. Sometimes because like the weird start times we're not able because like on Wednesday, if they have a game at 1 p.m., like we're not gonna be able to do a post game right. show live mm -hmm. over here at that right. point in time. But we'll be live more times than not after the game. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter than what it is here, but yeah, you'll be getting that. You'll be getting about three to four episodes a week on top of that. So y'all make sure if y'all 
new to the sky, if y'all been Sky fans, go to Chicago Sky Central, man. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun covering that season over there as well. And uh, the NFL draft is next week. This time next week, we'll know exactly who the Bears' uh, new draftees are. So that's going to be fun. Y'all can go subscribe that's to Chicago be Bears lit. Central as well. So y'all make sure y'all uh, stay tuned in, man. But um, like I liked in everything on, man. Go Bulls. Love you guys. See Red if you can, y'all. Another season in the books. Uh, yeah. Love you guys.